Now, Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Roma Wines present... Suspense! Tonight, Roma Wines bring you the MGM star, Miss Agnes Moorhead, in Postmortem, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness and entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant, as Roma Wines bring you Agnes Moorhead in a remarkable tale of... Suspense! Up with the buttercups, come on, get up, get up, here comes the sun. <laughs> Good morning, darling. Stephen, you goose. <laughs> Your coffee, oh, madame. my stars and crown. I wish you wouldn't insist on my having coffee in bed, Stephen. It oh. makes me feel like a loose character, <laughs> just like the old days when I was in the theater. Uh, coffee in bed, then a long <laughs> soak in the tub under the sun lamp. That's old Doc Archie's prescription for those aches and pains of yours. Oh, but I haven't had any aches and pains for weeks now. There, that proves it. You can't afford to stop the treatment now. <laughs> Besides, you look beautiful with a sundown. Well, if that's the case, have some coffee with me. Oh, I'm sorry. It's 9 o'clock. The train doesn't leave till 9.22. Ah, but the early bird gets the seat, my precious. Oh, yeah. I'll just start the water running and set up the lamp for you, my you dear. You needn't go to all that bother. How do you like your water this morning? Warm, lukewarm, hot? Warm. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm setting the lamp for 10 minutes. Mind you, don't take too much. No. All right, dear. All right, all right. If you uh, get in the bath just as you hear me close the front door, you'll get just the right amount of sunshine. Oh, really, Stephen? Now, uh, where's my goodbye kiss? Stephen, I... Huh? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Bye now. Bye, Stephen. Up with the buttercups. Come on, get up, get up, and here you my bathrobe pocket on the inside of the door. Oh, I'll hand it out to you. No, 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 no. Stay where you are. I'll just uh, reach around and get it. Uh, Stephen, don't open that door. The lamp, Stephen. Oh. Oh. oh, see what you've done. Oh, gosh, I hope I didn't break it. Oh. Say, these things are expensive. Hey, you didn't even have it turned on. I turned it off so you could hear me. That timer on it makes so much noise. Uh, well, no harm done, I guess. I've got everything now. Sorry to disturb you, darling. Well, you better hurry. You'll miss that train. Uh, bye-bye, darling. Be good now. Okay, bud. <laughs> oh, now what? Oh. All right, all right. I'm coming. <laughs> oh, catch my head. Cold. Oh, well, you don't have to burn up the battery. Oh, oh my. my robe. Mrs. Mead? Oh, I don't want any today. What? What, what was that you called me? Are you Mrs. Josephine Mead? Well, I was. My name is Archer now. I've remarried. What was it? This is the place, fellas. Hold okay. everything. We're what? coming. But who are those men? Who are you? Hey, does she know yet? Hold what? it, will you, Mrs. Mead? Hold what? it. In... All right, fine. Now let's try another one inside. Uh, you... Maybe in the kitchen, huh? All uh, right. What were you doing? Fixing well, breakfast I... for your husband? I'll put what the you... camera away. Can't you see she doesn't know yet? What she you... don't know yet? Haven't you been listening to the radio, Mrs. Mead? No, a tube's burned out. Why? She really don't know yet. For heaven's sake, will you tell me what it is? Aren't I... you going to ask us in? Well, I shouldn't, well, but I... Well, 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 well,
Oh, I... Now, uh, your husband, madam. It'd My be husband? Of, uh... He just left the house. Oh, has something happened to him? No, no. We got news for you, Mrs. Mead. I wish you'd stop calling me Mrs. Mead. My name is Archer now. I explained that to this man here. Oh, uh, Westcott's my name, Paul Westcott. I'm from the Evening Bulletin. You're a newspaper man. Yeah. Oh, my stars and crown. I haven't been interviewed by the press since I opened in Bright Eyes in New Haven 20 years ago. You were an actress? Well, I gave up my career after I married Mr. Mead. I uh, often thought I might go back to the theater, but things didn't work out that way. Now, well, that's very interesting, Mrs. Archer, but about the news we were going to tell you. Oh, don't tell her. Make a guess. Well, please, I... Can't you guess? Uh, no, and I wish well, I'll you give did... you a hint. It's the day the Darby has run off. Darby? Now, can't you guess why we're here? Your horses come in first. Oh, you must have the wrong party. I, I don't own any horses. Look, she don't no, no, that. no. Don't you understand? The news just came over the ticker from London. You're one of the three Americans to hold a ticket on Ravenal in the sweepstakes. Oh, there must be some mistake. Don't I... you understand? You've won $150,000. 150000 My stars and crown. I... What's the matter? Don't that make you happy? Boy, what a caption. <laughs> Housewife wins sweepstakes. Must be a mistake, she said. Oh, no, yeah. no. There really must be some mistake somewhere. It must be somebody else but the same name. You see, I I haven't any ticket on... Ra Ra well, I haven't any ticket at all. Well, sure, you must have. Where'd they get your name and address from otherwise? They don't just make up those things out of thin air. What are you trying to do, kid? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh... You say the winning ticket is in the name of me? Yes, Mrs. Josephine Mead. You said that was your name. Then it must have been my late husband who bought the ticket. Huh? Yeah, you see, the house is in my name, and I stayed on here after I lost Harry and uh, after my marriage to Mr. Archer. Oh, well, well, that's all right. Mead bought the sweepstakes ticket in your name. Anyway, you're the winner. But I don't even have the ticket. You don't, you have, don't the have the ticket. You mean it's lost? I never even knew he bought one till now. He never said a word to me about it. He... He died quite suddenly, you see. Well, gee, you better look around good and see if you can find it. Yeah, you can't collect the money without it. You got any of your late husband's effects around the house, Mrs. Archer? No, no, they've uh, all been disposed of, but I went through everything very carefully. If there'd been anything there, even sewn into the lining of one of his suits, I, I'd have found it. Well, think, that... Mrs. Archer, if your late husband never told you about it, he must have been intending to surprise you in case it won anything. So he would have put it somewhere where you wouldn't be likely to find it, wouldn't he? Well, he would in any case. I, I, I didn't approve of his gambling. All right, now, Mrs. Archer, to think hard. Wasn't there a suit he didn't wear very much? One you might not have sent out since the ticket was bought? Put away in mothballs, maybe? Uh, well, uh, there was his dark blue. Ah, uh -huh, his dark blue. He'd only worn that once or twice. I, I, I never looked there. You see, I sent all his other clothes to the Russian war relief, uh, but the uh, dark blue was in such good condition. It was practically new, Mr. Westbrook. Well, that's where that I, ticket is? I'll bet any amount it's in that dark blue suit. Let's have a look right now. Well, I'm afraid that's not possible. Not possible? Oh, really, Mrs. Uh, because, Ar uh... Because that's the suit Mr. Mead was buried in. For suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you as star Agnes Moorhead in Post Mortem, a radio play by Robert Tallman from the story by Cornell Woolrich. Roma Wines' presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Between the acts of suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. Evenings at home can be dull as dishwashing or friendly as a fireside, depending upon the ingenuity of the lady of the house. Well, here's a simple suggestion many smart American homemakers follow to brighten stay-at-home nights. As a high spot in a quiet evening of restful reading or listening to favorite radio shows, serve Roma California Sherry. For Roma Sherry helps an evening along adds a welcome note of warmth to friendly companionship. Yes, there's something about glowing golden amber Roma Sherry with the rich, mellow, nut-like taste that everyone enjoys. Roma Sherry, the favorite of millions as first call for dinner, is a delightful entertainment wine, too. So delicious with cheese and crackers or any simple snack. And Roma brings you a glorious sherry that is unvaryingly fine. Bottled at the famous Roma Winery in California to assure you sealed in goodness always. Give your family a pleasant surprise with fine Roma Sherry tomorrow. Delicious, easy to serve, so inexpensive. Remember, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. Now, Roma Insist wine. on Roma Wines. R-O-M-A. And now, Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Agnes Moorhead as Josie Archer, 
with Joseph Kearns as Stephen in Postmortem, a tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense! So you see, Stephen, that's the only place it can be. It's, it's there in the... in the casket with him. What makes you so certain of that? Well, the one and only time he wore that suit before his death was one Saturday afternoon when he went out for a stroll and stopped in at a, at a pool room. Mm. What more likely place than that for him to have bought a sweepstakes ticket? Well, if, if it's buried with him, we might as well kiss it goodbye. But $150,000, You Stephen. haven't any right to disturb a grave just on a hunch like that. And anyway, Harry might have lost the ticket. Oh, I tell you, I knew Harry Meady no more lose a thing like that than... than well, he just wouldn't, that's all. Well, if it's there, it'll just have to stay but there. why, Stephen? All we have to do is get a court order I and... I tell we, you, we, I won't stand for it. It's, it's sacrilege. If we've got to disturb the dead, we'll just have to let the money go. But it wouldn't be like desecrating a grave. Harry would have wanted us to have that money. After all, you were his best now look, friend. Josie, Josie, as your husband, I forbid you to disturb that man's remains. But Stephen, really, Forget it, that it there ever was such a sweepstakes ticket. Is that understood now? Well, all right, Stephen. Yes. Whatever you say. And if that snooping newspaper man comes back here, you're not to let him in this house. Yes, Stephen. Is that a promise? Yes, Stephen, it's a promise. Well... I've got to go now or I'll miss my train. We'll talk about it some more tonight when I get home. All right, dear. Don't forget to take your sunlamp treatment. No, I won't. Bye now. Goodbye, dear. Oh. Hello? Oh, oh, Mr. Westcott. Uh, no, I have not reconsidered. I definitely have not reconsidered. Stephen and I have talked it over, and he's deeply shocked, and so am I. I must confess at the very suggestion of disinterring poor Harry. Now, you'll simply have to go elsewhere for your front-page scoop, because I'm absolutely adamant on this point, and no amount of persuasion will make me change my mind about it. <laughs> doing this. I know it. I shouldn't be doing this. Yes, There's Mrs. something that tells me. I, I, oh, I... Ah, uh, you wait here, Mrs. Archer. I shouldn't be doing this. I know I shouldn't. Now, don't take it like that, Mrs. Archer. We have a court order all properly signed and perfectly legal. Well, I shouldn't have let you talk me into this. I, I'm, I'm just weak, that's all. I'm just weak. Stephen is sure to suspect something. That 150 grand ought to go a long way toward making him forgive you. Well, we'll... Will it take long? No, the workman is supposed to have it all ready. All that has to be done now is... Uh, well, it won't take long. Would you rather wait in the caretaker's house? No, no, I... I'll come along with you. All right. Hello oh, there. Huh? Hmm? Oh, are you Mr. Westcott? Yep. Well, there it is, Mr. Westcott. We hoisted it up, but we didn't open it yet. All right, here's the authorization. Pry the lid off of there. Make it snappy, will you? All right. Uh, you take that in, Jack. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, <laughs> What's the matter? Is it stuck or what? Take it easy, lady, will you? It's coming. Hey, you are, mister. It's all yours. Uh, hold, hold this light for me, will you? Keep it off the face. What's he doing now? Frisking the corpse. Oh. And don't ask me why. Oh, dear. Oh, dear Get that me. light off his face, will you? Sensitive type. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I got what I came for. Oh, please, get that light off his face. Okay, mister, okay. Hey, if you're all finished, we'll tuck him in again. Wait a minute. Huh? Put the light back on him. On his face. Now, on his face. Hey, what's a big idea? Oh, Harry. <laughs> oh, okay, you can douse that light now. Now, listen, you guys. Leave this just as it is. And stick right here until you hear from me. How come? What's the matter, Mr. Westcott? I'm not sure yet, but I've just got a hunch the DA is going to want an autopsy on this body. My stars and crown. <laughs> Hey, what's this, up and dressed already? Well, I bought some things in town yesterday afternoon. The delivery man usually comes around 10 o'clock, so I thought I'd put off my sun lamp and bath until then. Oh, but you will take your treatment then, promise me. Well, all right, darling, but really you worry too much about me. 
Why, you uh, must have come in awfully late last night. Did you see the show through twice? Stephen, I, I, I didn't go to a picture last night. Oh. I, I, uh, I did what you told me not to. What are you talking about? Here it is, Stephen, $150,000. You stupid little fool! Stephen, let go of my shoulder. You're hurting me. Who's with you? Who saw it beside you? Nobody, Stephen. I, I got the permit and took it out there, and he, he showed it to the man in charge of the grounds, and he, he got a couple of work. All right, go on, go on. Oh, one of them got it out of, out of the vest pocket, and, yes. and then they put the lid on again and lowered it and, and covered it up. You're sure everything was put back again, just the way it was? Why, yes, Stephen, of course. Well, I, I, I just hate to think he wasn't uh, put back properly. Oh, then... Then you aren't angry with me? I guess I acted pretty silly about it. I... Oh, I thought... I, I, I don't know what I thought. Stephen! Stephen, you didn't suspect me of having anything to do with... with Harry dying so suddenly. Oh, why, of course not. What an idea. <laughs> Look, you, you better give me that ticket for safekeeping. Well, I'll put it in the safe down at the office till you're ready to turn it in. Oh, that's a wonderful idea, Stephen. It... <laughs> It makes me nervous having it around the house. $150,000, Stephen. Just think of it. Oh. Harry's been pretty good to us, hasn't oh, he? Oh, don't say things like that, Stephen. I'm sorry. Oh, Lord, it's nearly 10 o'clock. I've missed my train. Well, if you hurry, you can catch the 10.15. I suppose so. You won't forget your sunlight. I'll start it at 10.15 sharp, I promise. Oh, oh, I'm sorry to be such a Dutch uncle, darling, but I do worry about you. You're wonderful to me, Stephen. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Stephen. Be careful, darling. Come in quickly. He just this minute left the house. I suppose he took the ticket with him. How did you know? I know a lot of things. For instance? The DA's ordered that autopsy on the body of your late husband. By stars and crown. I think they'll find out he was murdered. No. No. I... Your present husband, Stephen Archer, is an insurance agent, isn't he? Why, yes, And he insured your late husband heavily in your favor just before his death. Well, that doesn't prove anything. Well, maybe not. Uh, he's pretty good to you, isn't he? Takes you to Florida every winter, stuff like that? Oh, I should say not. How did you get such an idea? That coat of tan you've got. Oh, that. Well, that's from the sun lamp. I had a slight cold a while back, and now Stephen insists that I use the sun lamp for ten minutes every morning while I'm in the bath. While you're in the bath? He says it's more beneficial that way. It's a terrible nuisance, of course. The bathroom's quite small, and the lamp is always toppling over and falling on top of me. How's that? Well, I always wait till Stephen has left the house in the morning to take my bath, and then he almost always forgets something at the last minute and comes dashing back and blundering in the bathroom, and over it goes. What sort of things does he forget? Oh, well, one day, a clean handkerchief, and the next, some papers or other things that he needs, or his fountain pen, Does he or keep his... all those things in the bathroom? Oh, no, but he can never find where they are, so he comes barging in the bathroom to ask me, and then over goes the lamp. You don't say. I suppose you're insured pretty heavily in his favor now. <laughs> well, naturally, being in the business. Yes, naturally. Mr. Westcott, you don't I think... don't think anything yet. Oh, dear, whatever shall I do? I'll tell you what, there's a way to find out if you'll cooperate with me. With your acting experience, this ought to be easy for you. Now, this is what I want. <laughs> Stephen, uh, this is Mr. Westcott. He's with the Bulletin. And what can we do for you, Mr. Westcott? I stopped in the district attorney's office on my way here, Mr. Archer. They've just completed an autopsy on the body of Harry Mead. Joseph! It wasn't my idea, Stephen. Believe me, it wasn't. You understand, of course, I'm not with the police. I'm in this for a news story or anything else that might come my way. I see. I might be able to help you people if you'll tell me the truth. What was the result of the autopsy? The report isn't made out yet, but I think they'll find he died of a blow over the head. Sit down, Mr. Westcott. I... I might as well tell you everything. Josie, you don't have to tell this man anything Stephen, let me do this in my own way. Uh, you see, Mr. Westcott, it was all my doing. Stephen was in no way to blame for what happened. He used to come over in the evenings to see Harry. Not, uh, not me, but the more I saw him, the stronger the feeling grew on my part. Harry was... Uh, Heavily insured in my favor. Josie. He never took me seriously. Always scoffed at my love for the theater. I, I I couldn't help thinking how opportune it would be if if anything took him away from me. Josie. Do I make myself clear, Mr. Westcott? Go on. Well, the night Harry died, he had gone out and back of the house to get some air, 
and I was doing the dishes. And uh, it, it came over me all of a sudden what I had to do. I uh, dried my hands and went upstairs and got out an old fat iron I no longer used. And I came downstairs with it hidden under my apron and went out to where Harry was. Well, I, I stood there talking with him for a moment. And I waited until he turned his back to me. And then I did it. You did what? <laughs> I, I swung the flat iron by its handle squarely at the back of his head. He didn't die right away, but he, he was unconscious, and I, I could see it was all over. He, he had a weak heart, you know. And, well, afterwards, I, I took the iron over in the vacant lot and buried it. And the rest happened, as I told you. Is Stephen came around, and, and we carried him into the house. You mean you didn't notice the wound? Didn't it bleed? Well, it did a little, but I washed it off. I see. And then I took some pinkish face enamel I had left over from the days when I was an actress, and I, I, I plastered that over the wound and, and even powdered it so it would be less noticeable. I, I, I made a good job of it because, after all, I do know something about those things, you know, makeup. Uh, so that's why the doctor never noticed it when he examined Harry's body. Josie. Josie, I can't believe it. Uh, Forgive me, Mr. Westcott, but this is a terrible, terrible shock. Well, now you know everything. I suppose you may as well drive me to police headquarters. Why should I? You mean you aren't going to turn me in? That dent in his head could have been made by the men who exhumed the body. You and I are the only witnesses to that, Mrs. Archer. Yes, but look here, can't they in tell... In most if... cases, in this case, the body happens to be in a remarkably fine state of preservation. Besides, if I do you a favor, maybe you'll... Cut me in for a little of that sweepstakes ticket. Oh, anything. Anything you like at all. Good. I'll come back tomorrow and we'll talk it over. Good night. Good night, Mr. Westcott. And thanks. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Good night, Mrs. Archer. Good night. Well, my dear. Stephen. I've got to do a little thinking, Josie. This changes things considerably. It won't make any difference between us, will it, Stephen? I did it for us so we could be together. But you, of all people, and going out there and then looking at his But he body. was so well-preserved, Stephen. He just looked as if he was sleeping. Oh, that's peculiar. What is? Well, that he's, he's looking so well. After all, it's been some time. It's just like in the Emerald Snuff Box. What? The Emerald Snuff Box. You remember I played it for 33 weeks at the court theater? Opposite Henry Dixie? That was how they knew that it was poison. Because uh, of the way the body looked after all that time. Poison? Well, those bungling police doctors will never find it out. We can shut up that fool of a reporter with a sweepstakes ticket. That was a windfall anyway. We'll never miss it. But, Stephen, we can't count on things turning out the way we want them to. I made that confession just to give us a little time. We could take a plane in the morning and be in South America in a few hours. Oh, that'd be very foolish. No, my dear. Our best strategy is just to go on as we always have. I'll take the train into the office, you'll take your bath and sun lamp, and we'll be the same loving couple we've always been. <laughs> Josie! I'm up here, Stephen, in the bath. Got any idea where my iron pills are? I went off without them. They're on the sideboard in the dining room. You know perfectly well. What's that? I said they're on the sideboard in the dining room. Can't hear you. Mind if I open the door just a no, bit? No, Stephen. The sun lamp's right in front of the door. Wait, wait till I move. Is that you say? I said don't open the door. The lamp's Josie? 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 Well, hmm. that's that. Now, who the devil is that? All right, I'm coming. Around to the door, up with the buttercup, the sun. Mr. Archer? Yes. Uh, my name's Madison, Bureau of Detectives. Oh, yes, Inspector, come in. This is most opportune you're coming just at this time. I was about to telephone the police. Oh? The most terrible thing has happened to my poor wife. Your wife? She was in the bath taking her sun lamp treatment. Like a blundering fool, I opened the door and the lamp fell over into the tub. I ran downstairs to cut off the house current. But before I could get back, she must Wait have... a minute. You went all the way downstairs to cut off the house current? Why didn't you just pull out the plug? 
Oh, I don't, I don't know. I was panicky. I got confused. There was a dreadful glare of light, sparks flying all over the place. I was half blinded. Where's she now? Well, she, she, she's still in there. I was trying to get up my nerve to go in when the doorbell rang. I couldn't bear to see her like that, Inspector. Electrocuted. It's just too horrible. Well, let's go up and have a look. Uh, you're probably too late, though. Yes, Inspector. I'm afraid it is too late, but as you say, we must do all we can. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, Miss Darcher, this certainly happened at uh, an opportune time, as you say. A warrant has just been sworn out for your wife's arrest for the murder of her first husband, Harry Mead. This reporter here from the bulletin says he got a confession out of her. Hello? Oh, poor Josie. Poor, poor Josie. Perhaps it was just as well it happened this way. Is it, Stephen? Is it just as well? Josie! Well, Mrs. Archer, congratulations. You carried it off with flying colors. What do you mean, carried it off? By stars and crowns, Stephen, I wasn't even in the tub. I just stood behind the door and screamed when the lamp went out. Josie, you ought to be ashamed of yourself giving me a fright like that. It's no good you're pretending any longer, Stephen. Mr. Westcott was absolutely right. You're nothing but a, a, a common murderer. Josie, why, surely you don't believe That's that... That's what my confession was for, you goose, to trap you. They know all about how you killed poor Harry, where you got the poison and everything. Don't you, Inspector? That's right, Mrs. Archer. Why, you're worse than Sheldon Lewis was in the Iron Claw. You would stoop to anything. My stars and crown when I think what might have happened if Harry hadn't had on his new blue serge when he bought that sweepstakes ticket. Oh, officer, do your duty. Josie. Tum little Josie. Well, I guess this about ties it. Come on, Archer. Let's go. Up on your feet. Yes, Stephen. Up with the buttercups. Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Before we hear again from Agnes Moorhead, the star of Postmortem, tonight's suspense play, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. Here's a trick in taste magic that will help you win family praises, even for meals made of leftovers. To bring out the full flavor of any meal, to add color and zest to the table, serve red Roma California Burgundy. A glass full of robust, full-bodied Roma Burgundy Lens warmed over pot roast, a new lease on taste. Gives twice-served meatloaf that tempting first meal flavor. Yes, there's greater dining pleasure in simple meals served with the rich, satisfying goodness of Roma Burgundy. For superb Roma Burgundy makes plain foods taste great. Makes great foods even better. And delicious Roma Burgundy can grace your table often, for Roma costs just pennies a glass. Get Roma Burgundy tomorrow. Give zest and character to your next meal. Insist on Roma. R-O-M-A. Roma Wines. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is Agnes Moorhead. It's always like coming home again to do suspense. You know, Vincent Price came out to Metro Golden Mare the other day to see a private showing of the Green Years with me. And afterwards, he told me all about next Thursday's suspense show, on which he's going to be the star. Be sure and listen in, because it sounds wonderful. Next Thursday, same time, Roma Wines will bring you Vincent Price as star of Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Produced by William Spear for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California. Suspense is broadcast from coast to coast and to our men and women overseas by shortwave and through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.